I'd like to share some ideas on particles and waves. Electromagnetic radiation, of which visible light is one type, it can be thought of as propagating in waves. So there's quite a bit of history about this, and I've given you a little paragraph that you can read. There's a lot more on this in your e-text, in your OpenStax e-text, including some explanations of some of these experiments. I'm not going to go over them right now, except to just mention them in passing. But basically in the 1600s, there's a very important debate going on about the nature of visible light. Visible light, as I just said, is a type of electromagnetic radiation. Some researchers, like René Descartes, said that light was composed of particles, which he called corpuscles. Other researchers, like Christian de Huygens, said that no, light was actually made up of waves. And there were important experiments that supported both of those theories. Newton performed experiments that supported the corpuscular or particle theory of light. Thomas Young performed a very famous experiment now called the double slit experiment that showed that light behaves as waves. So there, were, there was a lot of debate going on about whether light was a particle or light was a wave, and notable experiments by very high-profile people supported both theories. So there was the particle or wave debate that was going on. Nowadays, we have surpassed either of those models or ways of thinking about electromagnetic radiation in quantum theory. Nevertheless, it's very useful to think of electromagnetic radiation as particles or waves, depending on the context that we're examining. So we will still say that light sometimes acts as if it were a particle, or sometimes as if it were a wave. So these are just models, different ways of thinking about, different ways of conceptualizing electromagnetic radiation. We can think of it as particles, we can think of it as waves, and then we can use modern quantum theory. Okay, right now we're going to focus on electromagnetic radiation as a wave. So let's talk a little bit about waves and the properties of waves. And once we do that, then we'll be set up to actually do some mathematic calculations on electromagnetic radiation. So first of all, I'd like to cover the basic properties of a wave. The characteristics of a wave and how we can measure and discuss a wave. You'll notice that I have a straight line here. I'm going to let that be my baseline. And you can think of this baseline as the surface of a pool of water. So maybe there's a swimming pool and no one has been in the swimming pool and so that it's nice, calm surface. Well, we're going to jump into the swimming pool and start making some waves so that we can talk about waves. Well, one of the properties of waves is that we have to have a whole number of complete waves. So as I make these waves in this pool, I'm going to find the midpoint of this line. I'm going to put a little dot there. And then I'm going to find a, another midpoint between each of those two line segments and put a dot there. And now I have divided it into four equal, roughly equal lengths. So I'm going to show two complete waves. And a wave has an upper part, a peak, and it has a lower part, a trough. So they have to be the same size. So there's my peak, and the trough has to be approximately, it has to be like so, they're approximately the same size. And they may not be exactly, but, but that's my intent, is to make them the same size. So that's one wave, and we're going to have another one. Oops, almost, there we go. And try to make this roughly equal. We'll just say it goes out of there, how about that? So I have two complete waves. The peak and the trough is one wave, peak and the trough is the other. So there's the peak, and there's the trough. T-R-O-U-G-H, trough. And now there are three very important properties of these waves that I can label 
and measure. The amplitude is in red there, and the amplitude is the height of the wave above the baseline. Baseline. Okay? And that's represented with a capital A. So that's the height of the peak above the baseline. If the peak and the trough are the same magnitude or size, then that height of the peak above the baseline should also be the depth of the trough below the baseline. So that's the amplitude. The next one I'm going to talk about, very important, it's the wave length. So it's the length of the wave, and if, if this is a whole wave right here, then as long as I pick identical points on two consecutive waves, that will be the wavelength. The easiest way to think about this is let's say that this wave starts there and ends there. And now you've got a length of that wave. And so then that distance right there becomes the wavelength. So the wavelength is the length of the wave, right? So what units of measurement could a wavelength be measured in? Well, any unit of length. It could be measured in meters, it could be measured in centimeters, it could be measured in nanometers. The wavelength is represented symbolically with a Greek letter. And it looks like an upside down Y. So it's a small line here and a long line there. And this is called lambda. So that Greek letter is lambda, and that is represents the wavelength, right? And lambda could be measured, the wavelength could be measured in meters or centimeters or nanometers or etc. As long as it's some sort of unit of length, then we're good. Amplitude is something that we're not going to talk about too much in this class. We're going to focus on wavelength and the next one, frequency, quite a bit though. So let's deal with frequency. Frequency is a little bit more challenging for us to understand. So frequency is the number of waves that pass by a position in space every second. So the number of waves that pass a point in space every second. The number of waves that pass a point in space every second. So if you imagine that you are standing on the side of this pool and someone jumps into the pool at the other end and they start making waves, if you were to stand at the edge of the pool and count the number of waves that passed by you every second, that would be the frequency. So frequency is represented by two symbols. One is, it looks like an italic V, kind of a swoopy V, like it's running. And that is called nu. That is the Greek letter nu. And that is, stands for frequency. In some textbooks and on some websites, they will also represent frequency, or, as just a lowercase f, right? So, nu or f, they let that represent frequency. Now, what units of measurement will frequency be measured in? So, there are a few of them. One of the frequency units you will see is the Hertz, which is abbreviated H, capital H, lowercase z. 
That literally means cycles per second or events per second. We're not going to use that one in this class because it does not allow us to cancel out our units neatly and we love being able to cancel out our units. But if you see Hertz, then you will know what they're talking about. The other units that we are going to use in this class is the s to the minus 1. And as you may recall, anything raised to a negative 1 power literally means that it's 1 over that value. Another way that we'll see this is written sec to the minus 1. You'll sometimes see it that way. And sometimes you will hear it described as inverse seconds. Now this is an odd unit of measurement. It's odd because there is no unit in the numerator. So we can't say somethings per second because there's nothing in the, in the numerator. These are just inverse seconds. Well, if we're talking about waves, then basically we are saying waves per second or events per second and the event that we're describing here is a wave. So inverse seconds, s to the minus 1, 1 over seconds, sec to the minus 1, hertz, h, z, they all mean the same thing. Okay? And again, it's hard to conceptualize because I can't draw a line on here to show you what a frequency is because a frequency is an inverse unit of time. So basically, if you imagine that you're standing here on the side of the pool and you count how many waves pass you every second, then you would get the frequency of that wave.